Welcome to the Truth and Reason page. We are a Christian organization. I believe a Christian has only one mission, and that is the Great Commission. We have been commissioned to make disciples out of all nations, and that is what we are here to do. To introduce you to theology, apologetics, and all the controversial questions of life and involving faith, kindly subscribe to our pages and follow us on this wonderful journey. God bless you. Hello, wonderful people, and welcome to another video. Today, I want to share something with you about gods, gods, idols, and idolatry. If you've been around church and church folk for a while, you likely have an idea of what these words mean or stand for, and also probably an idea of where this video is going. But I'm going to go there anyway. God and Moses gave his people an itemized list of moral laws known as the Tenth Commandment in Exodus 20, and a recount of those same laws in Deuteronomy 5. Verse 2, Exodus 20, verse 2. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of sleep. Verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Verse 4. You shall not make for yourself an image in a form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. Verse 5. You shall not bow to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and the fifth generation of those who hate me. Now God warns them without missing words to have nothing to do with other gods, neither make them nor bow to them, and that, my friend, is idolatry. The word before in verse 3 also translates besides, which means then idolatry is to have a god other than God himself, that's the God of the Bible, either in addition to him or apart from him. I repeat, idolatry is having a God or gods other than God of the Bible, Yahweh, either in addition to him or apart from him. The God of the Bible plays second fiddle to none or competes for a place with none. He's either first and only place or no place at all. Idolatry, therefore, is having other gods take or threaten the place of Yahweh in your life. This caution to the people of those times was especially timely and necessary considering their cultural origin, their wayward tendencies, and the nations around them. You see, their neighbors were unashamedly polytheistic. Hence, having idols and multiple gods was a natural thing. It was as natural as sneezing to them. Hence, their Jewish neighbors whom God had called apart to use for his glory were to be shielded from the folly of those are of those surrounding nations. However, I don't believe the problem of idolatry is reserved only for Jews living in the 1400s. In fact, I'm convinced we may be fighting a much bigger battle in our days when it comes to idolatry and having personal idols. In our day, there are many more things to make idols out of that Moses and his counterparts knew nothing about. They make me to define a word. Then I'm going to tie everything together so you can understand my point. The word I want to define is the word God. What is a God or when does a thing become a God? Paul says, A God is any object of ultimate concern. In simpler words, anything you give the most attention to or anything that demands your all has the tendency of becoming or has become your God. This means in a world where systems have been carefully crafted to produce things and objects to steal our attention and focus off of God puts us in a unique position to become probably the most idolatrous generation yet. Every little thing that was once thought harmless suddenly has developed the tendency of becoming an idol, which is a very scary thought. You see, every musician, every sport, every gadget that you like, and so on, have been advertised a device in such a way that it gradually seeps into a person's life and slowly but surely attempts to be beside Yahweh, that is to compete with God, or even to go before him, and that is to take his place, which makes it a pretty dangerous thing. Because before you realize, you would have made a shrine for your many idols on the altar of your heart. I'm therefore convinced that the sin of idolatry is more pervasive than we think, and we would do well to examine ourselves often to see if we have not become victims of this egregious sin. Unlike in old times where a person had to consciously, you know, 
carve that idol from a stone or wood or, or, or precious silver or something. In our case, it seeps in as stole the humblest thing. But before we realize, we would have carved out of that particular thing that we enjoy an idol so prominent that we place it on the altar of our heart and we say to it, this is my God. And lastly, I want you to remember that an idolater isn't simply one who bows to sticks and stones, but one whose chiefest concern isn't the Almighty God. The question then to ask yourself is, so, am I an idolater? Think about this. God bless you and see you in the next video.